Okay. That's set up. Yep. <laughs> All right. Almost there. And uh All right. We are live, guys. This is Indie Talk with Jesse and Jaren. And uh this is our 2022 year in review show. Uh gonna be yep. talking. Yeah. Uh we're gonna be uh we're gonna be talking about uh 2022, what uh what all uh was a part of that. There was a lot of wrestling shows. Jesse and I met each other for the first time or in person at uh a Faribault MAW show. That was a great show. Yeah, uh, that actually a good show. I think that was the night where uh where I don't know. I don't think the system was there, but we were both surprised that Crixus showed up. Yeah, Crixus made a one-time appearance, and we're like, holy crap, Crixus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good old Crixus. He's still doing good, I believe. So, yeah. yeah I, have, I really haven't heard heard any news on Crixus. Uh, yeah. Ho- hopefully he's doing well, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what else has been going on? Uh, talked about uh, oh yeah, yeah, we've had our first full year of indie talk uh, from uh January or well, our first official like starting year, like starting in January. We at uh January was actually when we started picking up doing shows and uh, getting people actually wanted to be on our show this little live <laughs> stream had on uh, my little profile and they're like we'll talk about wrestling with these nerds so <laughs> yeah that, that's where it all snowballed from just from a little idea and here we are a year later who who would have thought that that it got as big as it did yeah yeah and if uh if you guys want to check out our full review of our first year uh Go check out the the one year anniversary show that we did. Uh, I was on a. Oh yeah, it was uh November seventeenth. Go check that back out at the the archives page on uh Facebook. There, uh, we did a full review. We did a reaction video of our first show, and uh, a lot of things have changed since that time. And yeah, have changed since our the review show too. So <laughs> yeah. And uh or the the one the anniversary show and that, this is the review show guys so yeah and uh yeah I went to a lot of MAW AWF got to see a lot of stuff and Jesse Jesse went to some shows supported that watched uh, a lot of social media guys so many uh academy wrestlers that know us now which is crazy yeah so, that, that that is not Oh, we should also mention that uh, one big highlight for us was uh, we actually uh, did a live episode of Indie Talk from uh, the Male Civic Center at Nerdy Out. Yep, that's right. Uh, Nerdy Out, October 5th in uh, Rochester. Yep. So we did yep. uh, an episode with the system at Sla- and Johnny Oxville. And uh, Matthew Schrader, a wrestling fan in the Midwest. So, yeah. Uh, oh, we got uh, Jason Rage. He's already in the Instagram comments uh, watching this. So, uh, hey, Jason, we'll get you on here shortly. Yeah. After uh, we do our little uh, tribute show with uh, Jason or for Jason Strife, we'll bring on Jason Rage. See what he's got to say about the year, and uh, it'll be a little preview of uh, Jason Str- uh, or Jason Rage on the show. So, yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, we can go right into uh, uh, the tribute show. So uh, put some notes together. Uh, we weren't, we didn't know him a whole lot. We didn't see too many shows. I saw three shows of a max and. Seemed, uh, I mean, definitely a very influential person on the, the wrestling business. Uh, he wrestled, uh, he would have, uh, if he continued wrestling throughout this year, he would have wrestled for almost a decade. Uh, he wrestled, uh, or made his debut in 2004. So that was, a uh, that was a little while ago, but, uh, yeah, made his debut there. He, uh, started wrestling a few years later, uh, 
uh, actually six years later, while he's still like pretty new, uh, pretty new to the independent business, he started his uh, own promotion, Magnum Pro in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, which I mean, six years into the business and you're already starting your own promotion. I think that's a pretty big thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, I did forget. Uh, yeah, he was born August 14th in 85, Council of Bluffs, Iowa. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know too much about Council Bluffs, but Iowa, I mean, that's a big uh, wrestling, at least for independence right now. It's a big place. Mm-hmm. So he, he started uh, wrestling in Iowa over there. Um, what else I got? Uh, uh, he went by a couple interesting uh, nicknames. Uh, uh, he called himself the Dangerous J and uh the bulletproof <laughs> tiger so that was uh, i mean i don't know i'd have to if you guys know about uh how he came up with these nicknames it'd be kind of cool to see uh how that all came about and uh if anybody's got any comments or stories about him too uh want to hear him we want uh anything and any everything uh, related jason strife so yep this is this part of the show is about Jason, so it's not it's not about uh, us. It's not it's not about any guests that we had on. We're 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 kind of celebrating Jason at this time. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I was able to see him uh, uh, three times actually. Uh, it was uh, around one year ago today. Steel Domain Wrestling in August. Uh, uh, they just kind of randomly had him on the card. I was like, I didn't, I didn't think too much of it. Too much of it. I was like, I, I think I've heard of his name before, maybe. And uh, I was like, wanted to see uh, what he was all about. And uh, came out. He faced uh, Rich Maxwell, which I forgot uh, what what promotion Rich usually wrestles from, but I think he was a new guy around the area. And. Uh, yeah, wrestled Rich Maxwell had a a great match. Uh, did some high high flying spots. Uh, crowd definitely knew who he was. Um, uh, de- yeah, definitely knew who he was. Uh, knew uh, um, I don't know what am I saying? Uh, that uh got the well oh, as Jason Strife he played a heel, so people were <laughs> booing him, but he he was also like. I mean, he's Jason Strife, so they also liked him. So, trying to get over as the, uh, I think, bad guys, but also a uh, good guy. And then uh, later that night, which I didn't find out till maybe like a couple months after, but uh, Yellow Dog, he also played uh, an alter ego of Yellow Dog. And of course, Yellow Dog's a baby face for sure. So, he was uh, played Yellow Dog. He came out and, uh, Trying to remember who he faced now. It was uh um I think he might have he was involved in a some triple threat, I believe. Uh I want to check back on that again. It was a uh, uh man, I didn't have this part prepared. Uh Jason. If anybody's got any comments about uh Jason too, uh, you can put those in there. Yeah. Uh oh yeah, I think I found it. He was uh I think it was supposed to be a match, and then like right away there was an interference, and then they uh created like a three-man uh match. So it was uh uh Jason Strife, Aaron Corbin, and Garrison Creed versus Rich Maxwell. Um I'm trying to hang it, who was it? Rich Maxwell and uh Oh. oh yeah, it was a uh, Rich Maxwell, the system, and one other, one other person, I believe. So, because there was like an altercation of like the system and Aaron Corbin, and they had something delayed, and then Steel Man <laughs> like, "Well, you guys aren't going anywhere. You guys are going to be in a three on three match in the main event," and that ended up being a good main event, and uh, they had a. Uh, I mean, it was good three on three, this good guys versus bad guys. And I believe at the end, they had a, a kid come into the ring. Uh, maybe it was his birthday or uh, um, just celebrating uh, his life or something. So 
As a kid came into the ring, Yellow Dog did his thing, and of course the kid liked it. So, I mean, I don't think kids can dislike a Yellow Dog. So, it's just not a human. I don't, I don't think kids don't. I don't think there's not one kid out there that wouldn't like a dog. Yeah, <laughs> including a Yellow Dog. The yellow dog, yeah, 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 for sure. And um, yeah, he did that, and then a couple, a number of months later, it was August. So, no, actually, it was the month after, maybe the end of the month. Um, in uh, September, uh, it was actually uh my first ever below zero wrestling show. I was like, moved up to the Fargo Moorhead area. I was like, just there's actually wrestling up here. I didn't. I thought I. I thought I'd left the. <laughs> wrestling uh back home uh in uh, the cities and i was like there's wrestling i'm i'm going to that we got to figure out uh um or find new territories went to that jason strife faced uh one of slice guys uh uh mac who's just just giant seven foot dude uh pretty much kind of looks like kevin nash but he claims he doesn't <laughs> but i'm pretty sure he is so yeah <laughs> The face Sly's guy, and of, of course, uh, Sly Fox was uh, in the corner of that. So uh, there was a couple good spots in there. It's good, small, uh, good guy versus the big heel, uh, bad guy. And uh, there was uh, one funny moment where uh, Sly Fox was arguing with the referee. And then uh, there was some uh, like fusion, and then uh, Yellow Dog ended up biting Sly Fox in the butt. So. <laughs> Right on the apron, just bit him. Everyone's like, what are you doing here? So, "Oh, Sly. Sly got what he had coming to him." Then mm-hmm. Sly was just yelling, and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I believe Matt got him and finished him off, but uh, that was a pretty funny moment for everyone and seeing <laughs> Yellow Dog and uh, Below Zero Wrestling. So yeah, and uh, I did. Yellow Dog slash Jason Strife did make a couple other appearances for Below Zero and uh, Wapiton last year. So it's mm. Below Zero. And uh, I think Nick Stokey just commented we can add into, into that. Uh, Nick Stokey says, had the pleasure of having Jason on a couple of our events. Amazing in-ring talent and amazing locker room guy as well. I had a great chat with them at the last BZ, BZW event he was at and learned so much. So, yeah. And uh, I believe at one of the below zeros or, oh, no, I think that was, uh, maybe that was another show. I know he did a, a wrestling seminar for uh, some people. And uh, I believe Bullet Bronson was at that. Uh, oh, yeah. I think Bullet Bronson, I quoted Bullet Bronson, uh, Said Bullet Bronson says, uh, I did a lock up with him one time. He smacked he smacked behind my ear and it rang for 20 minutes. <laughs> uh <laughs> just to show uh, how important a strong lock up is and how it can show the audience uh it will be a good or bad match. So yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it was uh Let's see. Yeah, I got to see him for that. And then uh, Jason just helped me uh, remember uh, last year uh, when AEW first came to Minneapolis, uh, they first started out with uh, doing a taping of AEW Dark. I believe it was episode 117. Uh, They uh, had some notes about that. They taped it on November 12th, 2021, and uh, aired it November 16th on the their YouTube page. And uh, he faced Powerhouse Hobbs, which first time coming to dark for AEW, you got to face <laughs> Hobbs. That's got to be pretty scary. So, Yeah, yeah. Hobbs is, uh, is not one of those guys that you want to take lightly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty scary dude. Uh, and uh, if anybody doesn't know, he's on the the big all elite wrestling company. He was a member of the Taz's uh group and uh still with the company. I forgot what what he's doing with it right now, but big solid dude. And uh, 
he was just throwing Jason Strife around, but fans still cheer Jason because he's Jason Strife. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Jason Rage said, uh, overall, a great person. So sad he's gone. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I never got to uh, see Jason Russell, but I've, I've heard stories and he seemed like he knew what what he was doing and he seemed like as a promoter he knew what the people wanted so mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely and uh yeah he worked in a couple promotions like the nwa uh pro wrestling phoenix magnum pro his own promotion 3xw international wrestling association and then the the three uh, that we mentioned before, uh, and uh, and I I was looking back and uh, yeah, he did some work for WWE as uh, some uh, dark matches. Uh, or no, it was a two hundred five live match against Akira Tozawa. So yeah, oh. my yeah. Happy match out. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember seeing the match, but I didn't know I didn't I didn't know Jason at all. I think when it was aired like four years ago or something, but. Yeah, looks a little different. Had longer hair and pink tights and everything, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's been in the WWE. Um. Uh. Oh yeah, you want to talk about? Actually, no, I'll save that a little later. Uh. Um. Yeah, going into some pure comments about him. Uh, Joseph flying by. Uh, he's a wrestling fan in uh, South Dakota. Said uh. Uh, it was awesome to see him at a flagship pro. I think it was the first ever flagship pro in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, Kenny Defiance, he faced him in a battle royal and had a great time. He had, Kenny made a tribute show on uh, a tribute video uh, on his YouTube page. Uh, we can link that up to uh, showcase that. Uh, just a little uh, tribute and... Uh, the the battle royal match that they had in uh some promotions so yeah um uh former WWE superstar Eugene says uh met Jason in 2015 when he uh first moved to Sioux Falls um uh closest professional wrestling promoter to me he reached out to it. um wait he uh, he was the closest uh, promoter to me so I reached out to him to get booked. Uh, he was uh, kind enough to book Eugene in Omaha for that uh, his his promotion. Mm. Uh, Eugene was impressed with uh, his uh, wrestling uh, company. He this was uh, pretty good down there, and uh, he said, "I noticed right away that Jason Strife uh, quote gets it like it's uh, definitely gets uh, the business." He gets in the pro wrestling, uh, incredible in ring talent and impressive pro wrestling promoters. So, and, and, uh, I mean, coming from Eugene, that's got to mean a whole lot for sure. So, yeah. And, uh, current WWE commissioner Adam Pierce said, uh, Godspeed, Jason Strife. Thank you for always doing the right uh, way. Never saw you treat anybody with, Anything other than respect, myself included. Glad we worked and or met and worked together. So glad uh, I got to catch up a couple weeks ago. Rest well, my brother. So, and Adam Pierce, I mean, he's he. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, he did, did uh, independent work back in the day. And now he's a uh, executive, but they uh, worked together uh, a long time ago in the early two thousands. So. And, uh, let me check Facebook quick. Uh, Kenny says, you know why. So, Kenny, we always know why. We always know why, man. Come on. We're going to know why. <laughs> We're going to know why. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, actually, uh, PWP Lives, uh, that, that was a pro wrestling Phoenix company that he worked for. Uh, doesn't feel real, but tragically it is. A friend, a brother, a son, and unbelievably talented wrestler has left us. Um, 
uh he it is uh with heavy hearts that we're forced to say goodbye keep him in family friends and fans uh in, in your prayers rest rest in peace uh you will not be forgotten so and uh brian kelly says he was always a first class uh act with me um always great uh with the fans so heartbreaking to not only the wrestling world but uh at 37 true loss the world as a whole so yeah and uh yeah, that's what i gathered from uh the peers and yeah jason strife uh just from uh uh back when he had the was getting the illness that i saw so many comments like my feed was just flooded i was like you don't just get that from being a little wrestler you get that from uh like almost a decade in the business for sure so yeah, yeah and, I, and i know these guys probably don't watch this show but we should give a shout out to adam pierce and uh eugene for for making those comments yeah yeah definitely um let me just do that for um yeah those i mean big names like that that's gonna definitely mean a lot and since adam pierce posted about it i think a lot of people were finding out how great a wrestler uh, he actually was and because i mean a lot of wwe guys i don't know if they necessarily watch like uh nebraska iowa or minnesota in the re independent wrestling like we do so getting uh, the word out about that and uh yeah, it's definitely a big thing there. So, yeah. Um, let's zoom in. Hold up. I will send. And, um, that's trying to see. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we got a uh, all out press. Oh, all out pro wrestling owner Pete King in the comments. Uh, uh, he says, "Rest in peace, Yellow Dog." I mean, yeah, definitely right there. Um, yeah, no, I'll be right with you. Okay. Yeah, keep keep going. I'll keep it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jason Strife. Uh, I mean, yeah, wrestled. Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, and probably uh so many other places. Uh Phoenix, uh for Phoenix uh pro wrestling. And uh if anybody wants to go check out uh their uh tribute show, I can uh, link that as well. The PWP made a uh tribute show from their uh content uh that um Jason was in and they've done uh I guess Jason was in that promotion for so many years because there's the uh, content from the early 2000s so that was uh definitely really cool to see um what else did i have uh um oh yeah uh uh jason is actually is uh his brother uh real brother jason they uh made a GoFundMe. I I can link that uh for his uh funeral expenses as well. So if you guys are able to donate to that, uh that'd be uh if if you guys are able to, that'd be pretty cool. Um but yeah, I think overall Jason Strife was a great talent, better uh uh great person and uh got along with everybody in the, the locker room for sure. And uh yeah, he's definitely going to be a loss. Uh, he passed away December 29th, just a few days ago at uh, 9.55 p.m. So it was close to the, the nightfall. And it um, uh, doesn't say if it was uh, uh, how um, how it went, but I'm just hoping it was uh, peacefully and uh, not, in, not in pain or anything uh, while he was in hospice care. So, yeah uh yeah if anybody else has got anything uh we're open the anything right now for a few minutes um let me check a couple more uh posts about them uh i should turn that off uh he, yeah eugene made a 
couple posts a few days ago from a, I think it was a Central Empire Wrestling that uh, those two were a part of. There's a there's a funny post of uh, those two rubbing each other's bellies like how a dog would or how you would rub, rub a dog's belly. So I think that was a that was an interesting picture to see. And I was like, hmm. But yeah, Yellow Dog. That's the the character, of course. So and uh, yeah, I was uh, um. Okay. But uh oh Jesse's falling out of his chair. Yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, I just have one one more comment to make about Jason and then um I, I heard you were telling people that they can donate to to his cause or what his family's doing that would be that that would help them out mm -hmm. yeah there's a, a gofundme uh for him made by his uh, uh brother and uh, a family so uh I'll, I'll get that posted um i think it's just a yeah standard gofundme for uh funeral expenses for uh whenever uh they have it so yeah but uh, yeah, it's to close out the the Jason Strife tribute part of the show. Uh, yeah, just uh, the, before we close that out, let let's do a reminder to the people uh, to be respectful towards the family. Don't don't ask me and Jaren if we have any news on what causes death because I mean we we really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just, just please be respectful towards his family. Yeah, yeah. It just says diseases, but we we don't know exactly what it was or anything. So I know. Uh, I mean, of course, we we don't know where where he passed. Um, from what I understand, he entered hospice, and I am assuming that that's where he passed away was in hospice yeah that's what i'm assuming so too is probably uh with some uh nurses or whatever so yeah and uh i mean yeah just that too at 37 in hospice that's gotta be sad and then he just passes but i'm uh yeah we're hoping he was he passed uh peacefully and uh with uh the ones he loved so yeah, yeah. So, but before we uh, close, close uh, tribute to Jason Strife, uh, we'll just go ahead right now and say rest in peace to Jason Strife, um, and Godspeed to his family. Um, that's that's all. That's all I can really say about it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it was a great wrestler, great person to be around in the locker room for wrestlers and taught people uh, so much. He did uh, seminars, taught people like Bullock Bronson, uh, some uh, wrestler uh, or some uh, moves and how to be in the ring. And uh, mm -hmm. I made an uh, impact for sure, uh, not just in the indies, but like, I mean, Adam Pierce, Eugene commented about him too. So he definitely made a big impact on these uh probably at the time smaller stars for sure but now bigger stars are bigger names so yeah yeah, yeah so jason rest in peace and uh uh we're gonna keep your uh memory alive uh do a uh, tributes and uh hopefully people uh post post any uh any and all videos you got of them of uh any shows you went to so yeah, yeah. I mean, he wrestled for almost 10 years. I know people got uh, content out there. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, should we uh, transition into 2022 favorite memories from the, these three wrestlers? Well, yeah, sure. Um, I, I believe you have uh, one, a, a guest, an MAW slash academy graduate mm -hmm. yeah three i don't know if they're graduates yet but yeah three academy wrestlers 
Mm -hmm. And uh, oh yeah, you want to talk about how you came up with uh, this little part of the show? Oh yeah. Um, so what what we uh, are doing tonight is uh, we got three guys from the academy that are going to come on. They're going to speak for fifteen minutes, kind of tell tell you who who they are and. And I urge you, if you guys are interested in more to hear more from these guys, let us know and we can get them on the show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were uh, kind of thinking, um, uh, well, Jesse wanted to put three guys on and we're like, I think we should uh, put some new guys that uh, that uh, haven't been on the show before just to get a, a little preview and... Uh, um, just to see how how everything meshes well. So yeah, yeah I think it's not necessarily like this is a trial for them, and we'll determine if they're coming on the <laughs> show. But just like a little preview, just to get them on the show sooner than when we uh, when we we're able to, because I know we got a Jesse's got a lot of people booked, but we were able to just get them on for a little bit and just uh, see who they are, and we've. Uh, um, at least I, I've seen them all in person. And Jesse, have you seen any of these three a little bit? Or Rage, um, Rage, yeah, I don't think I've seen, but no, I, I've seen Jason like over in uh, Faribault. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> a good Faribault show. Huh? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've seen Jason multiple promotions and. Shade, uh, the one promote. I think I saw his, I saw his debut match. So I mean, that's pretty cool. And uh, below zero wrestling, and now he's dominate dominating uh MAW Warriors right now. So yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh <laughs> and uh, Miles Moore. I saw him uh a number of times, I believe too. So yeah, but uh. Yeah, uh, what do you say, Jesse? Well, when I say if uh, Jason's ready to come on and spend fifteen minutes with us, uh, that would be that would be good. All right, Jason has been summoned. The creator of chaos has been summoned. <laughs> and uh... I, I thought you were the creator of chaos, Jaren. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> To create chaos on this show so <laughs> yeah you know the summit's been kind of quiet tonight uh, yeah I'm not, i don't think they've i haven't seen them at least they haven't commented but they haven't seen them too much yet they haven't, i haven't really talked to them that much yeah yeah all right looks like jason rage is ready are you ready jesse oh yeah all right, we'll start as like as soon as we get them on and start like the intro. So, all right, Jason is coming on. He's connecting. Right, Real Drago right. says yo, so he's in the house. Who said that? Drago. 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 Our good friend, trust the Drago. Yeah. Boy, this is kind of going pretty quickly tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're yeah doing a pretty good job so far. Looks like our first guest figured out Zoom, so that's good. All right, he's connecting. Hopefully. Come on, Jason. You, you can use a computer. <laughs> Maybe your phone. He breaks computers. That's what he does. <laughs> uh, all right, he's connected. Oh, you know, there we go. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Great. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for your uh, comments there, for uh, Jason. Mm -hmm. Right, that was uh really important, and uh, just uh, who he was as a wrestler. So, yeah. Yeah, it was a great tribute. I uh, watched from the beginning, and uh, yeah, I thought it was a good little tribute. You know, unfortunate that uh, you know he passed away and everything, but. Um, it's important. It's important that we keep his uh, memory alive. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, but, uh, 
yeah before we go into like the memories and stuff you just want to do a a brief uh a, a brief little uh um uh, exclamation of uh who jason rage is and uh what you do in the, the midwest yeah well simply put i'm a professional wrestler that's i'm so proud of having that title and as soon as i had my my debut match that's what i started calling myself you know because i am um it's just something that i've always wanted to do and um i always try to like you know emulate myself after some of my favorite wrestlers and some of my like like what i would be personally as a fan uh be in the ring so anything that i would be entertained by i try to emulate in the ring and um yeah just kind of looking forward to uh 2023 see what uh we have going so far i have a few shows in 2023 already i'm excited to kind of see what it holds for me yeah yeah definitely and uh, uh, looks like Pete King is uh, talking about you uh, for Blizzard Bash too. You want to shed yep. some light on that? Yep. Yeah, we just uh, we actually just messaged each other before um, we went on here. Um, sounds like the show is going to be set for uh, January twenty eighth, which uh, I'm excited for. Um, mm-hmm. Not my first time in Wisconsin. Uh, I've been in Wisconsin a few times before for shows, um, but I'm always excited to go back. You know, and it's but for APW, this will be my first show uh, doing um, forward to uh, doing more shows if uh, Pete chooses to have me on. So always looking forward to working with new promotions and uh, new areas and and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we all we know all about uh, Pete King and uh, he uh, I mean, he's running a great promotion. He's got uh, some. Uh, good champions he's been doing it for a number of years now and uh yeah i think uh uh from we haven't been to a show pers- uh in person yet but i think uh it should be great uh experience for you from uh what we've heard from pete and uh footage we see. so yeah absolutely yeah uh jesse so uh you had a match not too long ago in fairboat with uh richard powers are you guys okay now did you uh clean clean the slate to start over with each other or are you hoping to get another match with them um well richard powers uh, i i've said this on numerous occasions before but richard powers is one of my favorite people to work with uh such a cool person uh to wrestle always have a great time when i'm in the ring with him um I, I seem to have good matches with him. So I've wrestled him a few times in camp at the Academy, probably three or four times, I want to say, in camp. And then we wrestled uh, live on uh, two shows before, both for MAW. One was for, you know, Fairbolt, that show. And then another one was for Retain. So Richard Powers, uh, the squad father, always looking forward to uh, facing him. If a promoter ever says that, uh, you know, I'm supposed to go against uh, Rich. I'm like, hey, it's an easy night for me. Got a great match. Good, good way to entertain the fans. I, uh, I thoroughly enjoy working with him. So, but that show at Fairbolt, I, I did like that show. Uh, that was a large audience, one of the largest audiences that I had worked in front of, mm-hmm. and um, just so fun, kind of getting that crowd interaction. Them to get, you know, so loud and cheer for me, and it just. It's such a, I even, I even told the ref, like as the bell rung, I'm, I told the RJ Wilkins, I'm like, this is what I live for, man. And he just goes, I know buddy. And I'm like, Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good to be in this audience. This is what I was meant to do. So yeah, working with Richard Powers is, is always uh, a good time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Oh yeah. You, uh, you did a little uh, referee work uh, during the summertime. You want to talk about that or. Yeah, so I refed uh, on uh, three shows. Um, I refed uh, my very first opportunity. I didn't know I was going to be refing until uh, the the day of the show. Um, it was for uh, French Lake Wrestling Association. Mm. Um, I've also wrestled with them as well. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I pretty much, you know, I went to go help out, set up and everything. And uh uh, Johnny Parks comes up to me. He's like, uh, you're going to be refing a match tonight. They just kind of wanted me to get my uh, uh, foot in the door a little bit with uh, being in the ring. And um, I was 
glad to take that opportunity. And uh, I didn't even have a ref shirt. I uh, actually used Nick Pride's ref shirt and I squeeze in that thing. His, his shirt was too small for me. I had to just squeeze my way, stretch that ref shirt out. But uh, I had a great time with that. And then I refed um, uh, a show for MAW in August as well um, at Liftbridge uh, Brewing Company. And then I ref for Pro Wrestling Battleground as well in September. So those are the three shows that I've been on um, so far for refing. But um, yeah, I always have a great time doing that too. I think that's a lot of fun kind of being in the ring. A um, little less toll on your body uh, versus, you know, actually wrestling. But uh, yeah, any way to be in the ring, I think, is is fun. So, mm-hmm. yep. yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, that FLWA show, I you I, I didn't realize that the, uh, that you were the ref and then you commented after. I'm like, oh, shoot, I just documented some history. So, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I remember that, I remember that you uh, posted and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. pretty cool yeah and I'll, I'll get around to policy more about that show too i'm about like six months behind on like so much footage now so trying to trying to get that out now but yeah yeah no worries yeah and uh oh wait uh in the comments here we got the real drago he's commenting again <laughs> he says uh you were also a bodyguard for his entrance at wilmer mania three <laughs> that must have been a cool experience yep Yep, I was. That's when I was, you know, extremely new to training, uh, just kind of going out, helping out at shows as much as I could. Uh, went out to uh, Wilmer, which is about a two hour drive for me oh. and uh, went out and they just kind of had like a little uh, um, little like spot for us. You know, they said, oh, you're going to be Drago's um, bodyguards. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Kind of being in front of that that big of a crowd and stuff like that. Just kind of being part of the show any way possible. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cody Hewitt on uh, Facebook says, I uh, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, on uh, Facebook, he's saying, uh, hey, Jason, do you think you'll have any death matches this year in 2023? <laughs> that was a great question to ask. And all I'm saying is this. It's in the works right now. It's in the works right now. So we got that first year under my belt, you know, uh, half a year, pretty much, you know, and uh, yep. That's what, that's the goal for 2023. That's one of my uh, things I got to, you know, check off the list there. So, well, you know, trust me when, when, when I have my first one, people are going to know about it. There's going to be, you know, several posts on Instagram, Facebook, you know, so it's not like uh, it's going to be out of the blue. It's going to be uh prepared okay yeah 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 we're definitely prepared for that so yeah uh it's we got your uh good buddy muerto gonzalez in the comments here uh says lucky to consider jason rage my friends so yeah how's it going my man huh. yeah great person uh to be around uh tag team partner just a uh, cool guy to be around too I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Too many inside jokes. Too many inside jokes, though. <laughs> oh. He says, uh, I'll bring the towel was just in case he bleed out. Oh, oh no. They're in a death match. Yeah. Hmm. There, there, there needs to be plenty of towels for that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I remember that uh, Steel Domain show and when you guys came up to me. I'm like, oh, shoot, so... You were a wrestler. Muerta was uh, becoming a wrestler. So that was back in August this year. So, yep. yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a cool yeah, that match. was only my third match in. So, Oh, your third match. Yeah, I knew it was like one of your be- first. I was like, uh, maybe it was your debut. I wasn't sure. So third match. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, what else we got? Uh, Bullet Bronson, North Dakota pro wrestler, says that uh, who are some opponents you would, would like to wrestle this year? You know, I was actually just thinking about that. Um, some people that I would like to face. Uh, well, the first person that like comes to mind right off the bat is uh, Rampage Santana. He's a guy that I want to uh, 
get in the ring and work with another guy that I've uh, trained with quite a bit. Um, I kind of know his style. I've been to a lot of his shows, but I want to actually like seal the deal and uh, you know, work with him, work with him on a show. So yeah. he would be uh, one guy that I'd like to work with. Um, another guy I'd like to work with uh, Ricky Norin. I think he's a really cool guy. We are, you know, we're in the talks of actually uh, getting a match under our belts in Wisconsin, possibly. So uh, that's going to be another fun one, uh, hopefully. So another cool guy that I've got uh, gotten to know in a little bit, and um, hopefully uh, we can make something happen. So, um, and then um, I would say, uh, you know, I'd like to get some more like academy students, like not anyone specific, but I, I kind of want to like face some like new guys from the academy because like to me i think it's like really cool that like to see new academy students progress and just see them kind of get their foot in the door um in the wrestling business and everything um and then um i kind of want to have a rematch with nick pride i think uh you know he was my debut match so and you know he won against me so i want to uh um actually i actually I would prefer if that was in a tag team match. So I want to get Celtic Death Rage, me, Celtic Wolf, and Mirato Gonzalez versus You Know Pride, Kenny Defiance, and Nick Pride, and a mystery opponent. So I think that would be pretty cool to do. So that would be kind of like my couple matches that I would, t- uh, people I would go uh, want to go against. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Cutthroat Jones on Instagram says, uh, Jason Rage, one hell of an athlete and one hell of a friend, saved me and protected me in our match together when I got injured. So, yes, yeah. Yep, yep. Batson, always a cool guy to uh, be around and stuff. I want to get a rematch with him too. We didn't have our, we didn't have our proper match that we were supposed to have. You know, he got injured. You know, I think like a minute and a half into our match, and we kind of had to wrap it up. But I, I, he's another guy I want to, you know you know, lock up with again and hopefully do battle with soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Jesse, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So, okay. okay. You want to go with what question quick? Yeah. Uh, this will be my last one. Then we'll let, let Jason get going. Uh, so what are your goals for uh, 2023, Jason? Okay. Um, to be honest, I just want to kind of get more um, established. I just want to kind of get myself out there a little bit more, uh, work with a few different promotions. I'd like to kind of go up to the Dakotas, South Dakota, North Dakota. Um, I'd like to travel down to Iowa, um, just kind of get familiar with more of the Midwest, um, but as well as like it's kind of my home promotions, you know, Midwest All-Star Wrestling, um, Steel Domain, and like MIW. Um, I want to like face like a variety of opponents as well. Um, you know, just kind of get out there more with, uh, different people, meeting new people, um, getting in the ring with some people for the first time, meeting them, yeah. just kind of experience more that wrestling has to offer, you know? Um, so, um, and then I want to do a death match of course as well too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're working on that right now. So, oh. And uh, yep. yeah, we'll go with the the golden the golden question for the night. Uh, what was your favorite memory of a twenty twenty two and uh, independent professional wrestling? Uh for me or just for for you? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. for me. Um. Ooh, that's that's really a tough one. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really a tough one to be honest. Uh, like I had my debut match and I had several really good matches and uh, getting out on shows, but I would say probably my favorite was uh, the formation of my uh, tag team, uh, Celtic Death Rage. Uh, me, the Celtic Wolf, Amirato Gonzalez. Um, we're just, you know, three guys pretty much that are very, very different from each other. Um, but we, you know, became friends through training. We trained every single day together. You know, unfortunately, Mirato got hurt, but he was still very active, um, involved with uh, professional wrestling and uh, with the academy itself. And, um, you know, we just 
always trained. We had good chemistry. We meshed together real well. And then opportunity kind of, we just kind of threw around the idea, like we should start a tag team. Like we should, we should do this. Uh, you know, it, it just kind of like was an idea. And then it became reality when um, uh, Midwest All-Star Wrestling did uh, a TV taping. And uh, the idea was pitched that um, uh, me and the Celtic Wolf tag team um, in the tag team tournament and then Murato Gonzalez is going to come out and manage us. And then we're going to get this. We're just going to just throw the spark out there to ignite our tag team, our trios. And um, so, yeah, just being in the ring and finally, like everything, like working out. And it's just like, wow, this is this is actually real. I'm actually wearing the Celtic Wolf shirt right now. It's probably a little hard to see on camera, but he oh. gave me that shirt. And I'm, I'm so proud to wear this shirt. But um yeah, being in the ring, you know, I remember going out there and and he made his debut uh, in that match, the Celtic Wolf. And oh, yeah. uh, I remember like, so it was so fun actually getting that, that tag team match. I'm like, it's official. Like I actually have like, you know, a tag team partner and um, like a little group that we have, just a group of three different people, very different background, very different style. Um, and I think that what makes us like stronger is because we're so different we're so unique um and um it's something that i think is like real special to me uh, that would be like my favorite moment of this year is just kind of getting that tag team that that trio is established and um i'm looking forward to uh um, doing more matches with these guys and uh seeing where the road takes us you know we actually got a show coming up this weekend uh january 7th uh, at 6 p.m. in uh, the Rudos Arena in Northeast Minneapolis, uh, me and the Celtic Wolf will we'll go one on one, or we'll go on a tag team. I'm sorry, we'll <laughs> be in a tag team match against the Freak Show Cho and a debuting Canon Chorus. So uh, from the Academy, so uh, I'm excited to uh, be at uh, Rudos Promotions for uh, that show with the Celtic Wolf, and uh, yeah, just see see kind of where it takes us. But yeah, that was a really proud moment. Uh, this year was just kind of getting uh, getting more established with more people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely. But yeah, it was. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your memories and just uh, sharing who uh, Jason Rage is, the creator of Chaos. And uh, uh, if you guys, if and uh, if the fans, uh, if you guys want an official show of Jason Rage, make it known in the comments right now, and uh, we'll get a official show set up. We just wanted to get a good preview of uh Jason Rage and uh yeah Jason I hope the hope uh, uh 2023 goes well for you thanks man I appreciate it thank you for having me on here I appreciate you're it welcome. yeah you're welcome man yeah yeah and uh, good luck on the sevens so yeah thank you. I appreciate it thank you yeah yeah all right have a nice night Jason you as well yeah thank you all right all right all right guys that was uh jason rage a little preview of jason rage if you guys want to back on uh we'll definitely uh have an official show for him uh set aside so uh yeah uh, let us let us know uh it's a yes for me i mean i'd like to get the know more about his character and mm -hmm. others so yeah should we uh should we summon Shay Diesel now? Yeah, we we can summon him. <laughs> All right, I guess so. Yeah. All right. He, he better behave. He better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I have to answer the Jaren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think yeah. I saw Jason a couple times his debut match, and uh, I think he's uh, got a good future, and he's already got a tag team, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> He's a he's a pretty good wrestler. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. All right, looks like uh, we got Shay Diesel. Uh, he's summoned in the waiting room, so we're gonna get uh Shay Diesel on. Get your comments and questions ready. And let, let's pick on him a little bit here. <laughs> the the professional scumbag here, guys. So. Well, we, we should call him Mr. Scumbag. Mr. Scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Right. Scumbag, the one and only. 
No, oh, there, he, there he is. He heard us. Uh, I'm trying to be Jay? respectful. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, no, I was watching. I was watching your stuff with Jason, and I saw a little or heard that little end about me behaving. And I don't know. It's going to be a tall task. Um, we'll, see. You know, we'll see. I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Jason. Or, oh, shoot. No, Shay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you guys upgraded to me. Yeah, yeah. Shay Diesel, guys. Uh, yeah, Shay, uh, talk about uh, how you got into. Um, or just uh, who Shay Diesel is and then what you did in uh, 2022. Uh, Shay Diesel, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy. You know, I'm moving like a big guy, you know, they're, you know, everywhere I go, I'm the big guy, the, you know, six foot four, six foot five, you know, almost 300 pounds guys. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm moving right now, you know, taking out the little guys. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping to get some matches against some bigger guys, some guys my size um, in 2023. Um, I got started, you know, just eight, nine months ago in April. Um, I started training at the academy, like, you know, all the other guests uh, today. Um, And it's been going good. You know, I got my first show in August. um, And that was the Below Zero show that you mentioned, um, where I was in the I was in the Battle Royal. Oh, yeah, that was my first show. Um, And then I've had four or five singles matches since then and a couple more rumbles um yeah so that was my 2022 i think a total of eight matches i'm hoping to get you know obviously more training and then uh more matches in 2023 yeah yeah definitely yeah i realized uh yeah what i think i was talking to you after that below zero show and you said it was your debut i'm like oh here we uh good debut from uh, academy wrestler and then uh this in the uh, i mean below zero definitely a great place to debut at and uh ferguson <laughs> A great great area too is uh Fergus Falls River uh, or Rumble on the River too. So yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh Jesse. So how has uh appearing on uh MAW uh Warriors kinda how how has that helped you? Uh, I mean I love working with MAW Warriors, you know, everyone that's you know there either you know, on the show and behind the scenes, um, you know, they're all close friends. Most of us are Academy kids. Um, mm-hmm. So it's pretty, I say kids, but, you know, some of us are 40, 30, whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You know, it's like a, it's like a whole different community, you know, just a little, little pocket of the indie wrestling world in Minnesota. Um, it's really nice to be a part of that. Um, and like I said, I'm being pushed like a monster over there. So no complaints. Um <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. yeah i've been seeing some of the warrior stuff and it just looks like you're throwing dudes around and just showing <laughs> off your big physique and uh getting your name out there so yeah, yeah i mean it's really awesome especially you know being on youtube um because you know then you can you know you can get the clips you know there's good footage of everything um you can share it with family and people who can't be there in person you know have those clips for promoters down the line um so really awesome to have that for you Especially yeah. just starting out, you know, eight months in, nine months in, getting that footage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we got uh, Leonard Literacy in the comments right here. Uh, <laughs> one and only. <laughs> one and only, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were kind of talking about you during the his show, too. And he's asking, uh, um, uh, what's a scumbag thing to do? <laughs> um, you know, the scumbag th- do- thing to do is exactly what you've seen me do on MAW Warriors. You know, come in, wipe the floor with the opponents, walk out. You know, there's no time for the funny business or anything like that. I don't have time to have sit downs with whiskey and stuff like that. You know, like Leonard and our other guest tonight. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm here to win. I'm here to get some W's on the record. I'm here to uh, get those clips I'm talking about and uh, you know, move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you and I mean sometimes YouTube and social media is seen as a bad thing, but I think for wrestling, when you're getting like those uh those clips out there, you're getting uh any videos, like you can you can just search a wrestler within a couple of seconds and you're like, oh shoot, this guy just like choke slammed the guy through a table or something. That was pretty cool. So of course, of yeah. course. I'm hope, I'm hoping to do something with the table soon. Uh, I haven't yeah. done anything with any kind of weapons yet, but you know, the tables, the outside spots all you know that that's where the that's where the views are. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, we got a uh, cocky Tommy Two Tone Tom Burdick in the comments here. Tommy, the one and only wrestling gone wild February fourth. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a, uh, he says coming to WGW in February. Yeah, uh, you want to talk about that for a bit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just re- I mean, I reached out to Tom. I actually heard about it through Jason Rage, um, your previous um, participant here. <laughs> and um, he, he mentioned it. So I reached out to Tom and said, hey, if you got any room, I would love to, you know, branch out, get a little more north. So, you know, head up to Hibbings. And then so, yeah, now I get to beat up Jason again. So that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, well, oh, uh, Drago says Drago versus Diesel. Hmm. Why? Well, I got to wait for that. <laughs> Anytime, any place. That's someone that's really on my uh you know, 2023, 2024, every year until one of us is not wrestling anymore. That'd be someone I would really like to work with for real. I mean, we've, we've worked with each other before in the, he actually eliminated me and Jason in uh, grand slam fours rumble. Um, I took a spear from him. Um, but yeah, I would like to get my revenge and work with a you know, guy my size. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't remember a uh, little bits of that. I was like, Oh yeah. That, that one spear. So yeah, the yeah Grand Slam definitely a big show, probably the biggest show of the year for MEW back on uh, November fifth. You were part of the uh, Women and Nations uh, the Eagle Ness uh, title match, so that was a uh, pretty cool. Like fifty dudes in there, or dudes slash females just coming out left and right mm-hmm. the Royal Rumble, and uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was a really good time. Uh, it was awesome, you know, especially raising all that money um, for the Women's and Nations. Um, it was awesome because my gym, uh, Crunch Fitness, so you're in Blaine, we got to be one of the sponsors, one of the vendors there, you know, set up a table, help uh, bring in those donations. So it was really awesome to be there both as, you know, a business manager and as a wrestler. So really awesome experience for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to talk about your business and uh, what you do for that or? Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a gym, you know, crunch fitness. Uh, there's, you know, 400 around. There's just a couple in Minnesota. We're working on getting that third one pretty soon, but the one I run is in Blaine. There's also another one in Maple Grove. Uh, come check us out. Memberships are pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Go you might it. run into Jason Rage or Devo Knight there also, if you come to the Blaine one, uh, they are on staff, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There you go working with your fellow enemies there you go so yeah hey hey i have them employed i don't work with them <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no those are my guys uh, it's awesome seeing them every day yeah 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 so if you guys want to train like shea diesel and get in good shape like shea diesel you better go there yes sir come see us yeah uh jesse so one more question for you so uh who do you think is behind all these attacks on Paul Burt? Ooh, that is a really good question. Um, you know, it might, you know, it would be a really scumbag thing to do, you know, to would be to attack Paul Burt. So, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying it's me, um, but definitely don't rule me out. Um, Miles Mora, he's been on everyone's bad side, low key. <laughs> so um, he'd be a good guy to watch out for. Um, Sterling Bond is freaking nuts so i mean he's, he's the guy to keep your eye on for sure um and i know rampage he has a title but he's always looking for another same with system so either of those guys are always shooting for the title over there so yeah a lot of yeah. big names uh you know i'm not i don't have any idea you know i'm not saying it's me i'm not saying it's not me but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah uh oh uh boy bronson says big guys and being thrown around gives me PTSD. Thanks, Sharon. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wear a shade easel bullet. So. Yeah, hey, Bull Bronson, we're not too far away from each other. So, you know, I mean, and you were, I'm pretty sure you were in that, the, my debut show at Bull, Below Zero. So, hey, if you ever want to, you know, get some more PTSD from me, come find out. <laughs> come find out. There you go. Yeah, he was, uh, he and Arlen uh, faced uh, the big Stonehenge. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a scary match to see. So. Yeah, the Stonehenge guy is uh, he's on my list as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, and Tom Burdick says we will have a table, so you might you might have to use that. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Like like Jason might get a preview of his death match. Yeah, there you there you go. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, we'll go with the uh, the golden question for uh tonight. Uh what was your favorite 2022 pro wrestling independent or 2022 independent pro wrestling memory? Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, the whole experience, you know, just being so new, um, you know, it's been awesome to, you know, learn everything, uh, get these first few shows under my belt. Um, my best match, I think, so far is the one with uh, Jason Rage that just came out a couple weeks ago on, uh, I think, episode 31 of MAW Warriors. Uh, I think it was only four or five minutes, but, uh, you know, I think it was pretty good, um, you know, good moves, you know, everything worked out, you know, it just feels like everything is coming together. You know, it's only been eight or nine months, like I say, so um, it feels like everything's coming together. So I think, you know, just be knowing that I'm in the right spot and, you know, just progressing each week, each day is, you know, that's my, that's my best part of 2022. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, they, we wanted to uh, just get a little uh, preview of uh, Shea Diesel, just uh, what you do, what you do in the ring and, uh, if you guys haven't been watching Warriors, then you definitely are missing out on uh, his uh, beatdowns of Jason Rage and uh, all these other guys. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So the lowdown is, you know, like you said, MAW Warriors. I'm on episodes 25, 27, uh, 30, and 31. Um, so, you know, check those out for sure. And all of them, you know, all the matches, all the shows are great, as of course. Um, coming up in 2023. I have, you know, like we talked about the Wrestling Gone Wild show February 4th um, in Hibbing, Minnesota. And then I have just this Saturday, I'm also on the Rudos promotion show uh, that Jason had spoken about down in Minneapolis. Um, so, yeah, and you can find out uh, all of Shea Diesel uh, at, at Real Shea Diesel on Instagram. And then Shea Diesel is on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, Rudo, that Rudo show looks like it. Should be fun. So, and guys, go to that. And uh, where, where was it again? Um, so, I mean, it's in, it's the address is one one two one Jackson Street, Minneapolis. Um, I couldn't find a name on the building, but you know, I'm sure I'll have something later on. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think J- I think Jason has called it the Rudos Arena. So, I think yeah, he- yeah, it's the Rudos Arena. There you go. Rudos <laughs> Arena. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, Shay, and uh, I hope you have a great twenty twenty three. Of course, of course, guys. Thanks for having me. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, have a nice night, Shay. There we go. All right, yeah, that was uh, Shay Diesel, guys. And uh, if you guys want an official show, uh, one on our official show of Shay Diesel, <laughs> definitely comment uh, or uh, make your voice yeah. known for uh, that. So yeah. Uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, but before we go into Miles Moore, I think we'll, I just want to share a couple, uh, a uh, couple year in review, just sharing a couple memories, uh, what we got, uh, um, I, I think I'm just going to talk about multiple memories from this year, but, uh, there was, um, uh, my first ever Discover Pro Wrestling show back in, uh, March for, uh, dang it, what was it, DPW2, I believe um uh that was a great show traveled about four hours to that got to see rampage santana versus the system and uh first ever maw championship match in dpw which was a uh, ended up uh being a half an hour so that was a big match to see so yeah jesse you want to share a couple of memories yeah um well one was uh doing indie talk uh from the Dallas Civic Center and watching some pretty good matches that night as well and uh, having the system uh, tip over on a chair. <laughs> yeah. Surprised he didn't like break his back or anything. It seemed pretty brutal of what he was doing. So. Yeah. And yeah. of course, there was the Fair Boat show where they had um, Hellboy Bob Orton and Crixus and a few other guys so yeah 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 definitely and uh yeah i think we let's just go back and forth about memories before uh, we bring uh miles on in a couple minutes but uh um 
Oh yeah, I went to my first ever Ironheart Pro Wrestling show this year. It was back in uh back in March. Uh, I was on spring break. Uh um the uh, oh yeah, Rosemount, Minnesota. Ironheart had a show there. Got to see um I think it was like the Rosemount Community Center, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, with my one of my uh, high school friends. Uh it was a both of our first time seeing I- Ironheart and uh Oh wait a minute! No, that was I'm actually wrong about that. Uh, that was uh, this will be our second show that we saw. We went to, um, uh, yeah, second show was in Rosemount. Got to see uh, uh, Killa Kate, Jody Threat, MJ Jenkins, uh, the System versus Xander Killen for the the Ironheart Championship, which uh, <laughs> ended up in a pretty funny ending. And I guess um, uh, Kaylin Diamond came out trying to. Uh, get everything under control. Xander Killen like does like a um like an old dirty D- Dean Ambrose dirty deeds to her, and uh, the match ends up in a pretty chaotic way, pretty much the same way of the Cena Batista uh, Royal Rumble 2005 spot. So that was a uh, pretty uh, interesting. And Xander Killen got carried out in handcuffs by the Rosemont police and fire firefighters. So <laughs> yeah. That was a wild night. Oh, did the system win the match then? Uh, he, he did not. I think uh, I, I was uh, uh, I think both both of them had their uh, shoulders pinned. So she, uh, Xander Kill and uh, or actually R.J. Wilkins and uh, Jesse Johnson were going back and forth. Like no system won, no Xander won, and then uh, Caitlin came out and uh, Xander was still the champion at by like default. So yeah. I think system needs I, I know there's a new champion now. Yeah, oh yeah. The new champion is Rampage now. So system and rampage again for a title. I think that that might be interesting. So that that yeah. might be the uh, feud feud of uh 2023. Yeah, I think if so. We, if they get it started again. Mm-hmm. You want to go with another memory, Jesse? Yeah, let's talk about um, <clears throat> when we had a, uh, I, I don't know if this was uh, anything, but it, it was kind of funny to me when uh, when we were doing an interview with the uh, system Crixus and the one man who didn't show up, Sterling Bond, because he was asleep. He fell asleep, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, and then uh, the poor system ended his night getting uh, kidnapped. <laughs> That's right. And yeah, that was our pretty much our first angle. Like system gets kidnapped <laughs> by Jerry Ulricker. Uh Us two and Crixus are like, uh, Crixus, what do you think? So <laughs> yeah, Crixus didn't really care. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, it's my show now. There we go. So, <laughs> oh man. So yeah. But as far as I know, the system and the and Jerry are okay. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I, think- I, guess, I guess you really can't say they're okay because uh Jerry mm-hmm. did uh smack them around in Rochester at the Mail Civic Center. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. So maybe Jerry will kidnap him again. We don't know. So, <laughs> oh man, we Just can only on our on our show. <laughs> mm-hmm. God only knows what happened to the system that night. So, <laughs> oh, well, I heard it was in a trunk. He was in a, he was just stuffed on a trunk until that <clears throat> that next show that system was on. So, <laughs> oh man, good old memories, man. <laughs> and, uh, let me go with one more quick. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Since Shay and uh, Jason were talking about it, I went to my uh, first Rudo show back in April. Uh, mm-hmm. me and my friend Ryan went there. We didn't know really what to expect, other than like we knew the building because Steel the Man runs in that the uh, Bloomington Knights of Columbus. Yeah, and we were just like, well, let's see what a. Uh, Rudo show is like we uh went to go sit down and uh just chilling. I went to check the merchandise table, a bunch of lucha masks. I'm like, these actually look really cool. And 
was looking around and sat down, uh, watched the show. And uh, I think a few minutes after that, Ken Anderson and his wife, Anastasia, just came by us. And they're like, hey, how's it going, guys? I'm like, hi. <laughs> so, how's it going, Mr. Anderson? So, yeah. yeah. What are they doing here? <laughs> he's like three seats away. I'm like, well, he's watching the show with us. So. <laughs> uh, not announced or anything but all of his academy guys were on there so yeah probably just chilling i'm like mm, okay and <laughs> one of the the mainstay rudos guy called him out and anderson's like no i'm good i'm sitting here so <laughs> so yeah uh, that was a good memory we'll sh- share more uh in a little bit after uh we get uh miles more on should we uh <clears throat> should we get miles on jesse Sure, let's get Miles on and listen to what he has to say. All right. Miles is summoned. Miles more uh, the Spectre. So. The Spectre. Spectre. Inspector Gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. This is pretty fun so far. Getting This is, this is mm-hmm. like the Rampage show, just getting multiple people on at one time. So. <laughs> Oh man, Rampage is jealous. Rampage is jealous. We're copying his method now. So he's probably sitting in his room crying. <laughs> oh yeah, Shay's wondering where Miles is. We're we're getting him on now. I think uh, if he figures out Zoom, so <laughs> uh, what is he drinking tonight? Oh uh, yeah, I wonder what he's got. He's like a I think. He, drinks like wine during shows he comes out like all fancy and stuff so probably gonna have his little like i don't know i don't, I don't know what he drinks something something fancy kool-aid <laughs> kool-aid oh yeah he'll be a niles punk a impersonator tonight so <laughs> <laughs> oh man so far michael's been pretty quiet yeah where's michael man yeah come on michael yeah all right, looks like Miles has entered the waiting room. Let's get Miles on. All right. Miles Mora, the Spectre. It's about time. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. How's it going, Miles? I'm doing good, man. How are you? How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Looks like a cozy room you're in right now. This is my office. This is where the magic happens, you know? This is where I... Uh, this is where... Uh, Miles Mora uh, thinks about what he's going to do for 2023 and who's going to have to pay for that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, tell us about uh, who Miles Mora is and uh, what you do. You know, in all reality, Miles Mora is really just ex- an extension of who I am. You know, <clears throat> I think uh, all the greats have always said, you know, like Austin, uh, you know, and Vince McMahon always say that the best characters are. Are, are the real you just kind of turned up, you know? Um, you know, Miles Moore, you know, that character came about just based on the, uh, the those Ekis, most interesting men in the world ads, you know? Uh, it's obvious that I'm a little bit older than most of the students at the academy. So I thought, you know, what would work with with my beard and the and the salt and pepper hair that I've got going on? And, and uh, you know, I, I've wanted to be a professional wrestler my entire life. And and this character wasn't really something I ever really envisioned, <clears throat> um, but I think it works for me in my current stage. You know, mm-hmm. Miles Mora likes to, uh, I say, uh, break bags and drink bourbon. You know, <laughs> an occasional cigar here and there. Um, yeah, just you know, think of think of the, the most interesting men in the world mixed with uh, a little bit of Narcos from Netflix. You know. <laughs> yeah yeah uh jesse so who are you planning on going after in 2023 going after the sharks baby everyone you know this has been a great year you know like you know just like shay diesel was saying earlier you know we started training when the academy reopened in march (laughs) and uh Anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe besides the freak show, Cho, who technically started training, I believe, as part of the first class of the academy when it opened, 
oh. and left for left for some time and came back. Uh, I believe I'm the first of the students to make their debut, and uh, uh, which is part of my my memories of 2022 is I actually debuted on Father's Day. Mm. You know, uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, I tend I'm a nice guy. You know, in real life, <laughs> um, and. Uh, it was it was really special to me to make my debut in front of my wife and my girls and show them that it's never too late to pursue your dreams, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, Diamond Dallas Page started uh, later in life and became a big star pretty much almost right away, so. Yeah, yeah. he's an inspiration, man. But Batista, Dave Batista, I believe, started when he was 34 or 35. Uh, Dallas Page as well. There's there's a handful of successful wrestlers that started later in life. You know, I kind of went about it backwards. You know, like I, I went to school, like I I I I graduated, I started my career in a family, and you know, it really really during COVID is when I thought, you know, man, like the world can shut down in an instant, and life can be taken away from you right before you know it. And I thought, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it, right? I'm gonna go for something that I've been wanting to do my entire life, but was always scared to do so either for just a multitude of reasons right like it was either you know this is crazy to say but in my mid-20s for example i thought uh, it's too late to start right like most most grades start right after high school right uh mm -hmm. and, and before you know it a year turns into two then four then a decade goes by right uh then i had a family and and and, and whatnot and eventually i said you know you know screw it i'm gonna go for it who cares right like my my initial goal really was to just enroll at the academy and see if i could last a week or two right like mm -hmm. um and i did I, I went above and beyond beyond that right uh my new year's resolution was to just have one live event match and uh i had uh 16 matches this past year at live events right uh so and every single match if, if you go back and find footage or just follow my feed online, you can gradually see how I've evolved uh, my character every single time. Every match, I I introduce some something new to the gear, maybe right, or maybe a a, a new uh, a prop. I would say right, whether it's the rosary beads or the the bracelets or you know the toothpick. You know, Razor Ramon was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Oh, I can. And you know, when I first when I first started using it, people would say, "Oh, you can't do that. Razor already did it." And I wanted to be guys. Everything's been done already, right? I think it's been thirty years. I think it's okay if I use a toothpick when I when I you know enter enter the ring, right? <laughs> uh, funny memory, twenty twenty two, kind of mm -hmm. pulling back the curtain, right? Uh, the day that one of my best days when 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 I wrestled Lenny, as I call him uh when the when the coward attacked me from behind by the way i uh i was looking at the camera and i had the toothpick right and i throw the toothpick up and and that toothpick hits the top of the rope and bounces back at me <laughs> but you know you can't quite see it because it's so dark you know in, in the arena but it was just it's it's one of my memories that no one really got to see but i threw it bounced back it was it was pretty funny but those are one of those things that happens, you know, uh, when you're alive and you kind of just got to go with it, you know. In fact, when I was about to get slammed, when he attacked me and he pulled me down, the only thing I can think of was, man, I hope that toothpick doesn't like go right through my back, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's been a, it's been a fun journey so far for sure. Yeah, yeah. You can have a a, a toothpick uh, match, like a thumbtack match, just land on a pile. Yeah. Of just take out a bag of toothpicks, lay them across the mat. Let's see who survives this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh man, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, uh, we got a uh, Dustin uh, from the Boy Brand in the comments here. Uh, says you don't choose your persona; your persona chooses you. So. You know, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, man. Uh, I, you know, I uh, I recently just posted something today. Uh, I cut a promo on Rashid Bati, who I get to face this Saturday at Rudos. Uh, but I uh, for the lower third, I went with the old school ECW nameplate. 
and I used to Shane Douglas as a screenshot, you know, for the people that were, they might not be aware, or maybe the wrestling historians, right? Because it's so out of context, you know, it looks so old school, but I wanted to prove a point that that's the type of wrestler Miles Moore is, right? He's driven by 80s and 90s wrestling, right? Um, and so, yeah, that that character, like my what I really wanted to be growing up was, you know, back in the late 90s, everything was extreme, right? Extreme Doritos, extreme Pepsi, everything was extreme. Jerry Springer was huge. ECW was, you know, uh, not on top of the wrestling world, but, you know, it was a third brand at the time, right? And so, you know, you'll never see this footage, but I certainly started wrestling during high school, you know, like backyard wrestling was really popular back in the 90s. Oh. Uh, and my, my name was the Extreme Franchise. And so growing up, I had this vision of this character. So, uh, hmm. yeah, the, the Miles Mora Spectre character is something that came to me, you know, earlier this year after I made my debut, really, you know. Because that wasn't even what I went by on my debut match. I went what uh, I went by Miles Morgan, uh, and and the Morgan name came came from uh, from Dexter Morgan, right? The character from the the Dexter series, um, and Dexter Loomis, of course, on Raw kind of portrays that character already. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of had to like repackage and kind of re envision who Miles Mora was. And my, my, uh, the name Mora is actually part of my last name. My, my real name is uh, Manuel Larios de la Mora. So I dropped the first part and just went with Mora, right? And I never envisioned using like my real last name as a wrestler, right? Yeah. Uh, and the name, man, my, my nickname is Manny. And Manny Moore, I just didn't quite sound right to me. So I stuck with Miles. Just, you know, I don't know. It sounded it sounded like it it, it went together, you know, Miles Mora. So um I just love everything they, that's that's that uh pertains to professional wrestling, not just the wrestling part, that's that's super fun, but just the character development and building storylines and feuds, you know. Uh, it's it's just it's I always I've always said that it's it's the greatest form of entertainment for sure you know and I'll I'll stick I'll stick to it for sure yeah yeah definitely uh, oh uh got Leonard Literacy in the comments here uh, commenting about that razor thing uh <laughs> that bastard get that guy out of here I'll I'll jump off this feed right now <laughs> <laughs> oh man. He's saying, uh, if you want a piece of me, instantly made me think of Razor, but I still don't like you. Uh oh. <laughs> it's a, hey, the feeling's mutual, Lenny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you did should ask her, you should ask your mom how she feels about me? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, how did this feud all, all start for uh, anybody that doesn't know? <laughs> well, let's see. Warriors. Uh, it started at Warriors, and the the truth is that. Uh, MAW officials are looking for new blood and uh, the academy is producing you know really good talent that I could see making it to the big time right um, and they've already produced talent that is in the uh, in the big times right they've produced talent that's in all elite wrestling and I don't have to name names I think we all know who they are uh, but I think we all have to start somewhere right Mm -hmm. And uh, no better way than to make a statement, right? If you saw that match with Paul Verk against Lenny, uh, it was it was a hell of a match. <clears throat> um, and I, I found the opportunity to make a statement for myself. I've had matches with MAW before, uh, but they were, you know, what I call the B shows, right? Like we're gonna we're gonna put Miles Morgan on the B shows. And uh, it kind of rode me the wrong way, right? And so what better way to make it to the top than to make a statement? And, you know, I might not like him personally, but the fans really love Lenny. Mm -hmm. And who else to go after, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did, uh, I did see that segment. And, uh, yeah, Paul Verk beat Leonard and uh, he came out with the code breaker and uh, the little jet, uh, the little sweater. And uh, that was a cool way to, hey, by the way, Lenny, I'm still waiting for uh, for payment for that that dry cleaner, man. I can't get the stench out. 
Oh, man. Yeah, you better pay him one. Yeah. Oh, he's going to pay. He's going to pay one way or another. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, boy, Bronson says, would love to wrestle you at some point this year. Uh, dig in everything you have said. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't get to uh, interact with Bullet Bronson, but uh, I, I was also a part of that uh, Below Zero Battle Royal this past year. Uh, so I don't recall if we interacted, but if we did, I probably tossed him out. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. He was, uh, he was at, uh, he and, uh, Arlen faced Stonehenge that night in the little two on one handicap match. So, mm, yeah, that's how memorable it was. <laughs> that's how memorable. Yeah. Oh man. He was in the, the battle Royal last year though. And I, uh, he might have been thrown out by Stonehenge too, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh Jesse. So I have one more question. Uh so are you the one that attacked Paul Burke? <laughs> you know, so let's uh let's go ahead and just make this clear. Um so first and foremost, Shay Diesel, I'm glad you watch your own show because it was actually announced who the attacker was on the last episode. But that's oh. neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, it was not me. It was Niles Plunk. Um, and again, if if he would have watched the show, he would have seen that he uh, acknowledged it, uh, which is why Niles Plunk will be facing Paul Verk um, coming up at the uh, Steel Domain Midwest All-Star Super Show 3. Oh, yeah. Come on, Jeff. There we go. There we go, Jeremy. We just we found out who did it. You know what? I don't blame you guys for not knowing, but Shay Diesel, I expect them more from you, man. Yeah, Shay Diesel. Yeah, I did. That's I did. that's the type that's the type of scumbag he is, by the way. He just probably watches his own segments and then just turns off the show. Mm -hmm. Just a like, guess. I don't know. Right. He's like, oh, I'm done. That's I watched my stuff. I'm getting better. I don't need to watch <laughs> stuff. Um, I do the equivalent of staying for the whole show. I watch everyone's uh, everyone's stuff. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, Shay says, uh, I don't get paid for Paul Vert getting jump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, there we go. But uh I know I know you kind of talked about a couple moments, but uh uh, the golden question, uh, what is your favorite 2022 uh, independent wrestling memory? You know, I've, 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 I posted this last night when I shared that I was going to be on your show, and I think it's pretty obvious that it was when I, I spit that tequila in uh, Lenny's face on <laughs> Warriors a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and by the way, that was not intended to happen. I actually, I'm a bourbon kind of guy, you know, I... I drink the finest bourbon, but uh, MAW officials apparently did not read my contract properly and got me some nasty tequila. So when I actually sipped on it, I thought, what the heck is this? And just due to timing and then, you know, Lenny disrespecting me, it, it worked out great. I spit it out because I wasn't going to drink it anyways. Mm -hmm. And it went straight in his face. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I knocked him out in front of his mom. I mean, who else can say that, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of us have gone in fights. But not in front of their mothers, especially knocking them out like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh man, but uh, yeah, I think that's all we got. Uh, I just wanted to get a preview of uh, Miles Mora and uh, fans. If you guys want to uh, see an official show of uh, Miles Mora and go more in depth, uh, make it known in the comments or uh, any way uh, you can. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, Miles Mora. Hope you have a, a great twenty twenty three. Hey, you're welcome, guys. Yeah. You. All right. Have a nice night. All right. Well, that was uh, Miles Moore of the Spectre, guys. He, he was tired of us. You could tell. He's, he's just, we're drinking. Wait, I don't have a bottle down. I got soap. He's just, I'm too, I'm too good for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was our three guys. Uh, Jesse wanted to put uh three our three guys on the show and uh, side of the upon those three for uh, being 
Academy wrestlers getting their name out there. And um, I think uh, I think we should definitely get them on for their individual solo shows uh, for the this year. So if you guys want to get a known, uh, I think you should definitely do that. So, yeah. Yep. Um, what else we got? Looking at the comments. Uh, uh, we're close. Yeah, I think that Leonard Litter see Miles Moore out that hope that uh match is put on a huge stage to to see so yeah hopefully it, it will go somewhere i know they things going on now now who's uh wanting to come on yeah. <laughs> p. King. p king wants to be on those we don't need any more pete so oh no uh, we're, we're we're burnt out from pete <laughs> yeah yeah um no yeah i did uh, yeah i did see that show that he was talking about where they announced him but i didn't i thought niles plunk was just saying because niles plunk gave sager a note about how he wants to come to the show i didn't realize that he's uh that he was actually the attacker i thought it was just something happening so i i was a little confused how they were able to do that so i'm glad uh miles uh shared some info on that so yeah, yeah. so it wasn't yeah wasn't uh so it wasn't sterling who did all the attacks <laughs> it wasn't sterling it wasn't sterling it wasn't shay or miles or jason or um uh who else would attack um sterling and uh, uh yeah. brian sager i guess either that was confusing too so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say it was nick pride it was nick <laughs> oh man yeah so we got that uh mystery solved and uh yeah we'll have to see see where that goes yeah um, yeah i think we're at uh i think we'll uh just share a few more memories and then uh we'll go into uh a new thing that we'll uh, announce in a second so uh um let me think of something uh um I know I made a couple uh uh promotion debuts this year. I I know uh um I, I yeah just to talk about the FLWA again that Jason ref on for his debut. That was a fun show. It was a uh, July fourth. It was a blazing like eighty some degrees out there, and uh, it was a uh, holy crap in uh, Delano, Minnesota. That was. <laughs> That was uh that was a, something to see and uh uh originally um my mom was just gonna drop me off but then she's like at it it was at a a fair so she's like she wanted to go uh look at uh some of the the rides and stuff and just see what was going on and then and then we found like the the show was just like in the middle of uh um just in, in the middle of the fair and like oh there's a ring that must be it so uh and. <laughs> She decided to stay. It was uh, my mom's first show at the FLWA, and uh, we didn't realize that we probably should have brought chairs, so we sat in the grass, so that made it a little hotter. <laughs> so, sat in the grass, no shade at all. Everyone else took the shade and uh, just sitting there, and uh, I was recording on my phone, and um, I was getting my my phone was like heating up, like just burning. And then it just like automatically shut off. I'm like, Oh shoot. I think my phone's broken or something. So, uh, and then I asked my mom, Hey, can I film some clips on your, uh, your phone? And she said, yes. And film some clips on there and forwarded it to my phone. So got all, uh, got footage from the FLWA that I'll share. Uh, once I get caught up, I think I'm, I'm still sharing uh stuff from, uh, Stillwater from um uh, I think it was July. That was the big uh, Moses Drago match pay per view. Oh yeah, yep. So yeah. Uh, what about you, Jesse? What's another one you got? Um, another one that I got was uh the night that uh Horace the psychopath was supposed to return, oh, but no. he never did. So, yeah. and that was also a night where Horace was supposed to take on Jerry Allricker, but mm -hmm. poor, poor Jerry got tripped by Brian Sager and 
Mm-hmm. Sager is claiming to this day that he didn't do it. He still didn't do it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Oh yeah. We thought. Yeah, we talked about that a few times. I remember that. So Brian's innocent, supposedly. So. <laughs> well, I- I'm thinking it was Craig that was the one who oh. tripped. Who tripped Craig him? Did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh. Yeah. Another memory. Um. Uh. Was a. Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, back in April again to uh, uh, Time Bomb Pro Wrestling. If anybody doesn't know that, extreme uh, hardcore wrestling company in Fargo, North Dakota. Dakota. They, oh, uh, they do uh, like death matches and well, death matches mixed with regular matches, but they've done some extreme stuff. And uh, there's a match with uh, Darren Corbin versus um. Oh, Darren Corbin versus Jordan. Uh, uh, they did a spot. They were wrestling, uh, going back and forth. They were throwing each other around the the ring and coming out to the the fans, throwing each other into poles. And then um, there's a spot. Darren Corbin's in the the ring, just posing, like doing his thing, uh, showing off to Jordan. And then uh, all of a sudden, you hear the the beginning of uh, the Sandman theme song by uh, Metallica, and we're all looking around because we can only know what uh, that theme song means. We're looking around. There's like a, a staircase going up. Um, uh, I'm well, actually I'm down below looking up, and like see up there in the rafters, uh, the Sandman is up there. The ECW legend Sandman. He's got his cane and everything. He's pointing uh, Darren Corbin. He walks down the stairs and uh, uh, just recording, like, because he's the Sandman. And he's coming around uh, to the ring, gets in the ring, starts beating on Darren Corbin. And uh, uh, Jordan does a, uh, he picks him up, throws him through, like, um, I think it was like a trash can in the center and one, two, three. And those two are uh, uh, just celebrating and, uh, uh, and just having a great moment. But, yeah, Sandman. Seeing the one and only Sandman was uh, pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, you want what's another one, Jesse? This one dates back to one one episode of our show. Uh, we had oh god, when when was it? Um, we had uh, Bill Williams on. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, and we were, we were just talking about Kyle Pro and everybody else, and then lo and behold, Bill just shoots right out and calls Nick Nick Nelson the horse of ass. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was he just randomly said you're a horse's ass, and we're like, okay. <laughs> uh, so nope. so far, we've had a kidnapping on the show. Bill calling Nick uh, an animal. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, man. It was super old there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of things happening. Um, all right. I think, uh, should we do some uh, awards, Jesse? Yeah, I, I think we should uh, do that. Um yeah, like I said, we're we're right on cue with everything. So yeah, it's been going pretty smooth tonight, and mm. probably finished up before eleven, so our viewers don't go sleepy. So, oh, have we had any uh, questions or anything? Uh, not yet. No, uh, Shay Diesel was the last one to comment ten minutes ago. So yeah, I think so. We keep our our viewers interest. Uh, it's going to some awards uh before we get into the big one you want to share some of the smaller ones jesse sure so uh so we're gonna be doing before we do the big ones we're gonna name a rookie of the year and that rookie of the year is gonna be none other than nick pride just for the simple reason that not only does he wrestle, but he referees and he goes all over the place. And I think uh, he is going to be doing some work for Pete King, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think 
the battle royal coming up at the end of the month. So, yeah. Oh, Nick Pride is Indy Tots 2023 Rookie of the Year. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Oh yeah, for uh, our women's uh, uh, rookie of the year, uh, we were going back and forth, and I believe uh, Amina Belmont. Uh, it's been we've been seeing uh, some of her work, and uh, uh, I think she's been uh, doing a great work, doing great work, and uh, she'll be rookie of the year for the female side, and she's also facing Lena Solana at uh, uh, that APW show as well. So yeah, all right. And you got one more, Jesse? Yep. Uh, 2023 Comeback Award. Um, this guy obviously deserves it. So because of his feud with the system, and I think uh, that should be uh, looked at as well. So the 2023 Come back of the year award goes to Hollywood Brian Sager. Yeah, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grants, they're, they've been having a, a feud for uh, over a year. Uh, Grand Slam 4, uh, they they either finalized it or it was a great uh, first uh, one on one match. But how, how, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood Brian Sager. Uh, uh, or actually, Nerd and Alcon, Hollywood Brian Sager challenges the system for Grand Slam. Uh, Brian Sager uh, plays the the Let It Rock by Kevin Rudolph comes out. It's a a big uh, applause, big um cheers. I'm there by uh, ringside, and yeah, I was probably one of the most electric uh, entrances of the night. He comes out, faces the system, uh, uh, the rising get involved, so then it becomes a uh, and then Paul Verk comes out, becomes Paul Ver or Verk Sager versus Jacob System, and uh, Verk Sager um, come out on top. So, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, for uh, we were thinking about a comeback for uh, females, but we uh, we haven't we didn't know uh, too much about uh, what's been happening. We haven't seen. Uh, not that we remember, we can't remember any uh specific comebacks for women's wrestlers. So uh we wanna we want you guys to if there was ever a, a good comeback for uh the female wrestlers to come up with some and uh I think we can um uh judge on that, but we can't we were going back and forth. We couldn't remember anything specific. I mean, there was a lot of things that happened in uh 2023. So if you guys want to help us out, I I'll probably make a clip of this and uh uh get a um to share with you guys to see if you guys got anything. But uh if not, that's all right. But um uh, yeah, if you guys can think of anything, that'd be pretty cool. Um but yeah, that was uh it for our smaller awards, but uh this next award uh it'll be the the big thing that we were promoting earlier today, uh the magic wheel picker will decide the fate of 20 female and male wrestlers of who will become the uh, um, uh, the wrestler of the year. So uh, should we get into it, Jesse? Let's get into it. Been all, right. all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let me figure out how to share the um, screen again. And get this up. But, uh, yeah, so we've got a wheel picker. We've used the wheel picker a few times. You got 20 names. We're going to... We got them on there, and we're going to do a process of elimination. So spin it, lands on a name, they get eliminated. Then we do that for about, um, hopefully it won't be too long. It should be around 20 or 25 times. So uh, we'll see when we get the screen shared. Um, all right. Can you see that, Jesse? I can see it. All right, let's get the Instagram viewers to see it too. We're gonna play Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> We're playing Wheel of Fortune tonight. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we got the wheel here. We got names. We announced them uh, earlier today, so you guys know. Uh, we're gonna go with the the females first. We got twenty names on the board. 
Um, I believe how it works is click the spinner and uh, it spins, lands on a name, and we'll go from there. So uh, uh, let's begin this. We are spinning. Um, uh, oh, man. Uh, looks like Blair has been eliminated. Uh, yeah. Congrats, Blair. Congrats. Well, not congrats. You got eliminated. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Blair Onyx, unfortunately, has been eliminated first. Um, all right. Took her name off the list. So we're going again. Uh, let's see. A lot of people I want to win on here, but <laughs> we gotta be impartial. Yeah, I want to. Rachel Ellery is has unfortunately been not chosen. Uh... I can't change that sound. It makes like makes it sound like she's a winner now, but it's uh oh my phone song now. Okay. Oh, hold up. Mm. Rachel Ellery, the second one eliminated. Yeah. We apologize, Rachel. You're a great wrestler. Uh, Rachel. <laughs> all right. So that's two down. We got 18 more to go. Leslie, Leslie's still in there. So, yeah, you never know. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Stacy Shadows is eliminated. What? What are they clapping for her for? <laughs> yeah, which I don't know. I don't know if I can. There's got to be a volume on that the program itself, but I can't find it. Because uh, if I turn the volume on down on my computer, then I might mute you. So I, don't, uh, I wish there was a way. Shelf. Yeah. Huh. So clapping doesn't mean a good thing, guys. It means elimination, but we're reversing that tonight. Uh all right. Stacy Shadows is eliminated. All right. I'll let you do I'll let you tell uh tell everyone when they get eliminated and then I'll okay. elaborate after. So <laughs> all right. Let's see who's next. Oh, Willow Nightingale has been eliminated. Willow, he's a big star right now. Yeah, AEWs. Mm -hmm. By the way, guys, go check out State of Pro Wrestling. Me and John, or Freddie Fredrickson, did an interview with her. Just a cheap oh, yeah, one. That... Hmm? Yeah, please check that out, guys. Yeah. All right. Lots of good people in there yet. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Marty Bell has been eliminated. He's a NWA wrestler now. I believe she joined during half the year, during midway through the year. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. All right. Unfortunate for Marty Bell. All right. <laughs> He's Maybe already. Yeah. Oh man, not kill a Kate. That was a favorite one too. Kill a Kate. Eliminated. Yeah. She's a, a independent wrestler in Texas that I got to see one time or no, a couple of times in Ironheart. So that's a bummer. All right. Oh, Alakina Loca has been eliminated. She's a great wrestler, too. I'm once. Yeah. All right. Oh, man. Bad. Badger Briggs has been eliminated. Not a winner. Elimination. Yeah. 
Clapping's not a good thing tonight, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got 12 people left now. Leslie and Shauna Reed are still in it. Mm -hmm. The Lila Doom has been eliminated. Mm -hmm. Like a Royal Rumble now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Eliminated. <laughs> uh, all right. Sierra still in there. Yeah. Oh, Heather. Heather Reckless has been eliminated. All right. We got 10 people left now. We got through half the list, so. Let's see. Sierra, Leslie, uh, Shauna, and uh, Lena. Uh, MJ, Kate. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Joseline. Joseline. Navarro has been eliminated. Take that off. You got nine people. Oh. Oh, ooh, that one. That one's. Uh, uh oh. Leslie has been eliminated. <laughs> that was a favorite man, too. Oh. All right. You got eight people left. Uh, for anybody just joining, we are doing the 2022 Female Wrestler of the Year. <clears throat> Put 20 names on the, the wheel. Uh, we're spinning uh, to see uh, who's the winner. We're going to, uh, whoever lands on, they're eliminated until there's one person left. We got eight people left now, I guess. All right. Muslim was just eliminated. She did last longer than Rachel Ellering. Yeah. That's <laughs> All right. Oh, man. No. Ooh, Miss Kate has been eliminated, and I think we'll be hearing about that one this Saturday. He's not going to be happy when we break the news to her online. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Oh man. Kylie Ray. Shauna Reed is still hanging in there. He's still in there. Sierra, MJ, Lena, Brooke, and Tootie. So <laughs> and no, not Tootie from uh <laughs> from one TV show. <laughs> Ooh, Lana has been eliminated. Lena Solana. Oh, no. All right. We're down. Have... Five. Uh, All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Who's it going to be? Tootie's eliminated. Tootie Lynn is gone. Try again next year, Tootie. Yeah. All right. Four, top four now, I guess. Oh, man. Brooke Valentine is gone. Queen B has been eliminated. So there's only three left. Hmm. Uh, well, uh yeah. and Jenkins. Yeah. Well, let me see the comments quick just to see if I've got uh Ken says I've got five on it. He wait, here's oh he's doing the mail wrestle. He's deciding mail. Um 
Oh, Shayla's hoping it boiled down to Leslie versus Lena. Oh, man. I'll beat it. I <laughs> agree. Yeah, that would have been a good one. Sorry, Shay. <laughs> yeah, viewership went up. Yay. All right, top down to three, guys. Uh, let's spin the wheel. Oh, Shauna. Shauna Reed has been eliminated. Big oh, Shauna off. Uh, Between Sierra and Jenkins. Sierra, MJ Jenkins, uh, <clears throat> this would decide the fate of the the ultimate rest, female wrestler of the year, guys. Uh, you guys got any bets? You can place them now. I will be the, I'll be the on the crap table tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. Decide now, guys, and uh, forever hold your peace. So, <laughs> <It's brother. All right. laughs> All right, who will be the 2022 uh, uh, female wrestler of the year? And we are spinning now. Oh, oh man, <laughs> MJ Jenkins has been eliminated, so therefore making Sierra the 2022. Indie Talk Women's Wrestler of the Year. And I I can't disagree with that. I think that's probably the best choice. I was before we thought about uh doing a wheel picker, I was like, she has to be uh wrestler of the year for sure. So Sierra has become wrestler of the year. We'll get a poster made uh maybe within the next few days, along with the all the other mini awards. Uh and if Sierra was your top pick, guys. Uh you guys are fortunate tonight. So we, we want to hear we want to hear from our viewers if yeah. they agree with that. Uh oh, we got Shay Diesel says 2022 was the year of Sierra. So and uh Ken Ken Defiance says well deserved Sierra. So there we go. Well um, now now we got the guys coming up and uh Joey Joey Jet Avalon is in that one. Yeah, you imagine if the couple somehow get the their uh wrestler of the year, that'd be a, a big <laughs> piece there. And, and so so that the people on here know that we do not rig this this was he did, no. This yeah, was my favorite so <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we were, well, it was even hard coming up with 20 people in general, and they're like, how are we going to, um, how are we going to decide this? I think we can, we have to go back to the wheel picker like we used back in the early days of Indie Talks, so, yeah, uh, we, when we we'll, did uh, the giveaways, so, yeah, back in, we might, oh, we might. 2023, we might, we might uh, do some giveaways if you're, uh, if you guys are interested in giveaways, so. Yeah, well, yeah. what we we can do. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll give away Jesse. No, <laughs> get your own Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse does birthday parties. He goes to. Uh, I, uh, I, I go everywhere. <laughs> I go every, he goes to graduation parties. He does all that. So, well, um, we'll actually give away uh, the system violin. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We give away. Uh, we'll just take it from him one show, and it'll be on a giveaway, and he'll be like, "What? What happened here?" So, well, and we'll also give away uh, Johnny's car. So, oh yeah, Johnny's so car. See Johnny Axel getting off at the bus at a show. You know oh, yeah. why? <laughs> you know why? We took his car. We gave it away. So, oh man. So yeah, he he did. Did. Clients driving around in a nice new car. You, you know, you know who did it, and you know why. You know why. <laughs> oh man. Well, I think I got the the next wheel all set up. Should we do the male wrestler of the year? Let's do the male wrestler of the year. All right. Let's get our screen shared. 
All right, can you see that? Oh yeah. All right. So we got we are doing the 2022 male wrestler, uh, independent wrestlers of the year now. So same thing as before, 20 people. Got the the list right here. We talked about it on put it on social media earlier, and uh, twenty guys, but only one can become wrestler of the year. Who will that be? And should we start spinning, Jesse? Let's just start spinning. <laughs> All right, he's gonna be the unlucky number one. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. Our Nelson will probably walk away with it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh man. Brandon Gore is gone. That's had a great year. Yeah. And it's had the uh, not a word you, sir. Brandon has had a pretty good year. Yeah. Oh, bye bye, Brandon. You're gone. Bye, Brandon. <laughs> All right. Nineteen yep. left, guys. Who is it going to be? Oh, man. Jack Ledger. Ledger. I'm sorry to the DZW champion. <laughs> that was close to being Joey Avalon there. That was super close. <laughs> oh, I don't want to hear from Joey if he gets the one <laughs> And I I would be very scared of the wheel picker if they some if both couples or if the couple somehow just walks away with this like not not rigged wheel picker spun twenty times that that'd be pretty scary. Just watch it happen though, probably. <laughs> yeah, with our luck. Oh man! All right, who's next? Uh Hopefully it's just fun for people to watch. So, oh man! Oh, that's. It's I'm sure we'll, well. I'm sure we'll hear hear from him. I'm sure too. <laughs> he he nah. was pretty crazy with us at the show. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, he was a wild, wild dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, the yeah, the leader. Oh, she. What's the the dang it? What is what's the team? Uh, what's the uh faction called again, Jesse? She. Oh. You know. the, the movement is that movement. Yeah. yeah, the leader of the movements. The elite movements eliminated, guys. Yeah. All right, who's next? Oh. <laughs> Bill Williams. Been eliminated, guess. He's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> no, nothing revolutionary about that. <laughs> no. On <laughs> WF heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. 16 more, guys. We'll have you out of here by 11, hopefully. Uh, oh, man. Oh, the guy that runs, runs the show, Kyle Pro, has been. The pro. Kyle, Kyle's had a pretty good year, too, but he's MIA now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Let's see the comments. Ken says, you know who did it. <laughs> I think he's responding to that car thing that we were saying. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, who who do you guys think will be uh, wrestler of the year? I know it's getting a little late, but wrestler of the year, what do you guys think? All right, let's go with another name. Oh. The Godfather, Richard Powers. Man, not a Richard Powers, man. I I think Richard will have a break on it year in 2023. Yeah, I think so too. He's he's a singles wrestler now, and 
time will tell. Maybe he'll become the innovation champion this at the end of the month for MAW. So, yeah. All right. Oh, no. Darren <laughs> Corbin. Oh, man. That was Sorry, close to the show. Look how close that was. Jesus. I know. That was on the line. Show, you have been saved. <clears throat> oh, man. Darren Corbin's eliminated. Oh, his first first year in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could he become wrestler of the year? Yeah, I, I think a guy with the violin would be mad about that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. He was 13 left, guys. Oh, 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 no. The show was done. <laughs> no, now he's done. Not long. Boom, Cho, you're out of here. Uh, Try thank, again next year. <laughs> thank you for being on the Price is Right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, you know, Nick Nelson's still on here. Yeah, Nick Nelson. And he's, thinking, he's probably thinking about Bill right now, saying, who's the horse bass now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, he's next. Joey Joey Avalon still in here, Jesse. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing from Pete, but Pete's oh. investments been eliminated. The investments gone. We should do more of these somehow. Somehow <laughs> do awards like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why <laughs> uh, who's next and didn't even make it on there <laughs> yeah uh. oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh no Joey Avalon has been gone I think <laughs> but congratulations to Sierra. Yeah. One power couple. Yeah, at least Sierra got it. So all right, we got oh, we're halfway through now. We got 10 people now. Who will who will be next? Who will, 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 will. Just already a two hour show. Amen's break. <laughs> has been eliminated let's bring over the other one too all right i'll go a little faster now who's next oh oh man cordoba is done well both members of the movement are out of here movement man Still got the former member, Paul Verk. <laughs> uh, all right. Levy Cruz is still in it. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> well, uh, well, the program, Nick Nelson. Nick Nelson. I'm sure we'll be hearing from JJ within a few days. Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Who's next? Who are your uh, top picks, guys? Yeah, we want to hear from you. Oh, no. Yo, another APW. The APW US champions gone, guys. Uh, yeah, Ken says Pete's guy. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Ken, you, you would say that. You would say that. <laughs> All right. We are uh we are at six now, guys. Paul Burke, Levy Cruz, who's gonna go? Oh man. 
That was a good one, too. I didn't even know. Yeah. But the sister <laughs> somehow holds on. Yeah, Devon's had a great year, too. That's unfortunate. All right. It was pretty much AWF against uh, MAW. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Uh oh. Uh, one half tag team champion. He a lovey. Oh, by a lovey. <laughs> now it's uh, three MAW versus AWF. Mm-hmm. Ooh, oh. a These are like all of our top favorite guys, too. So. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, I better win. Better win. All right, who's next? We're at down the four now, guys. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Rampage Santana, you're gone. Yeah, member of the boy brand, guys. You're gone now. Well, there's uh, another bully brand still on there, Paul Burt. Mm-hmm. And we're down. Paul Verk and the system are still on here, Jesse. Oh and man. Stevie Brown. Stevie Brown. EWF. Oh. All right. What do you guys think? Whoever's watching. Uh oh, Shay Diesel says Devon. He's upset about Devon losing. Uh, up, Shay. <laughs> yeah. uh Shay says uh oh yeah, Shay also says uh Rampage System, Paul are all my top five indie wrestlers of 2022. So <clears throat> we got to see if System or Paul are going to win this for uh, for Shay's sake. All right. Top three. You ready, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Paul Burke, our MAW world champion, is gone. Yeah, so, yeah. Now it's, so now it's interesting. PD Brown in the system. Mm-hmm. Former rivals. Former rivals. They had a big uh uh yeah, they had a big match at uh it was the systems last night. System and Crixis were having a Mishap and PD Brown got the win and tables and chairs and everything involved. So, so, so guys, who's gonna take it? AWF or MAW? Yeah, and they're the right colors too. So, <laughs> red and blue. There we go. Let's see if anybody said anything. No, nope. Ken said Burke for the win. No, not well, this time. Not again. MAW. Uh, M.A.W. might win, though. Let's find out. Uh, this is incredible, he says. We we love the system. We talk about him so much, and we he coincidentally not rigged, not anything other than that. The other than the fact that we put him in the wheel is this is interesting. So, ah, uh, man. Well, here we go, <laughs> man. Tony Paul Burke, you're right watching. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, here we go, guys. 2022 male independent wrestler of the year will be decided in a few seconds. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that, oh. The system has been eliminated. Well. Uh, in the any yeah. talk wrestler of the week, our first ever any talk wrestler of the week, and uh, first ever wrestler of the year, <laughs> Edie Brown has won, guys. And uh, uh, the AWF will have bragging rights for at least a year, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, PD Brown, and yeah, I can't disagree with that, he's been oh, he's. I think he's been wrestling for oh, is it seven years maybe now or longer? So mm-hmm. great talent, great entertainers for sure. So 
PD Brown gets the win, guys. So, yeah. uh, oh yeah, let me actually let me get him on. Let's get him a showcase here. <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen again. All right, yeah. So here's our showcase. PD Brown and Sierra are uh female and male wrestler of the year now. So that's pretty interesting. Uh actually for fun, should we just see who wins this between these two? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> this won't count as anything, but we want to see uh who PD Brown versus Sierra. And they had a match last year at my first BZW show too. So uh for fun guys we're gonna see who wins between these two oh man (laughs) yeah he actually beat him in the match too holy crap this is not rigged at all but (laughs) this is insane right now oh man Let's actually let me close it out. So yeah, PD Brown, male wrestler of the year, Sierra, evil Sierra wrestler, female wrestler of the year. So uh Ken Defiance said any talk wrestler of the year goes to Sierra. So yeah, Sierra beats everybody, guys. She beat the males too, which she does in matches for sure. So uh yeah. Um that is uh that's our awards part um oh let me stand this up again hold up technical difficulty technical difficulty hey we forgot new promoter of the year <laughs> oh yeah yeah there's so many other years we could do we could do nick Soki. uh we could do uh pete king tony Danucci, uh brian flagger <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, for, I don't. I know. Forgot his. Oh yeah, his. Uh, I think his name's Robbie something. Uh, uh, promoter for uh Wisconsin. Um, shoot, Raging Pro Wrestling in Wisconsin. I think he deserves a little shout out. So, yeah, he does great work. The system's been on there. All your MAW favorites have been on there. So, yeah. But uh. Yeah, what do you think, Jesse? Well, I think uh, we pretty much covered all our bases here tonight. So I'm hoping everyone enjoyed the show. And once again, congratulations go out to PD Brown and Sierra. Um, Friday night, we got Derek Stone coming up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Saturday. We got Miss Kate, and I just have a funny feeling she's gonna let somebody have it because she didn't win wrestler <laughs> of the year. Oh man, we, get, if, we gotta show her the footage of that so she can see it. But oh yeah. man, yeah, I think I don't, we'll have to we'll have to see her live reaction when we get her on the show and uh, reconnect and see if make sure she's all good. So. For uh, the Saturday, the seventh, uh, uh, eight thirty p.m. Central Time, guys. So, yeah, um, so Derek yeah. Stone Friday night, Mr. Kate Saturday night, mm-hmm. and hopefully right. we'll hear from our winners of the the wrestler of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh oh yeah, a little cheap plug. Uh yeah, with the program, guys. If you guys don't have this, you guys aren't getting with the program. So get with get with the program. <laughs> Greatest ad of all time. Look at that barcode, black and white, and everything. So yeah, do, do we even know where where Paul where uh Kyle Pro is right now? Do we know uh I I mean I don't think he's doing a show tonight so he's probably just chilling uh maybe he's out with michael hanging out and i don't know <laughs> yeah, since they're good buddies, <laughs> good buddies yeah. 
the, the system Matthew Schrader hanging out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to shout out what we got here, Jesse, as we oh, always yeah. do? Our, uh, yeah, I need to start wearing that again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to wash it up tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, that should know that uh, we have t-shirts, Indie Talk t-shirts. So if you want one, hit up Bully Brand. I think we got, I don't know how many we got left, but. Yeah, we got at least 70, 70 left, I believe. So. so get out there, guys, and buy a shirt. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, you, Ken Defiance, you buy a shirt, too. Yeah, Ken Defiance, you know why you should buy a shirt. Come on, man. Yeah. And if you don't, we'll hunt you down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, $25 to Bully Brand on the Cash App application. Uh uh instructions are on uh, every single um uh promotion post that we have uh, when we put the when we promote a show that's coming up it's all always on the the bottom where it says um are you guys in oh what does it say again um uh it says uh uh are you guys interested in official indie talk t-shirt they are available there's a link there's an instructions uh I mean, pretty much boils down to um, a cash app. Uh, I know people have had a couple issues with cash app, but uh, if you ever see Dustin, the boy brand that uh, shows, you can do cash in person. Uh, he he goes to MAW shows or anywhere that ranch goes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know a place that uh, he'll for sure be is uh, Below Zero Wrestling. Uh, uh went below zero wrestling winter slam fargo north dakota february 5th he helped bring in uh uh dirty dango aka fondango at uh to get to do meet and greets there so big help from uh dustin he'll be able to, he'll be there uh, uh i'll tell him to bring some uh shirts i'm planning on getting a couple shirts for uh, some family members as well so uh buy a shirt I know uh, we've only been here for a year, but I mean, I mean, yeah. twenty dollars. This is this is a great shirt, guys. Yeah. But other than uh, than uh, anything out there right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but bed, better than a system shirt, a Matthias shirt, uh, Sly Fox, uh, but, golf club, or anything, whatever he does. <laughs> but better than that goofy haircut of Pete King. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh man better than anything you've ever seen and yes yeah, this, this logo ain't going anywhere guys it's nice uh material it's stitched on there really nice i've washed it uh uh max like or i've washed it a number of times it's logo's not going anywhere and uh mm-hmm. yeah white t-shirts man you got to get them man uh Thanks. give uh a dirty dongo one for free. <laughs> yeah, Dustin, just give him a, a dirty dongo or give dirty dango a, a indie talk shirt for free. Just just make them wear it. Just do it. Just do it. So well, do it, Dustin. Come on. You know you want yeah, to. You know why you know why. So. <laughs> well we, we still need to get JJ Rogue to, to actually get one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah force JJ into it. So. But uh, sh- yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. That's been our. Uh, you got anything else, Jesse? I have nothing right now. So except once again, we got Derek Stone Friday night and Miss Kate Saturday. So that should that should be pretty good. Yeah, and lots, lots of people for 2023. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, we've had her. Uh, I mean, we've had her for a f- full official year from November to November. We've had her full uh, numbered year of 2022. I think, uh, yeah, 2022 marks like the official start of uh, Indie Talk, I believe, having mm-hmm. all back to back weekly shows. So, uh, 
It's been a big year. This is our big year in review show. Uh, uh, actually, uh, one more thing. Or uh, going back to it. I, geez, wow. Well, going, <laughs> going back to it again. Uh, um, Jason Strife, influential wrestler, maybe greatest wrestler uh, of all time in the uh, uh, the independent circuit. And uh, rest in peace to Jason Strife for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you to Jason Rage, Miles Mora, and Shea Diesel for uh, their appearances tonight. And I think uh, we'll definitely get them on the show uh, sometime. Yep. Just want to preview them tonight and uh, have them be a part of a, a cool show. So um, um, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, comments are good. Um I think uh, we're good to close out, Jesse. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will see you in the the next one in uh, 2023, guys. Yeah. Live is ending.